All right guys, so before the second lockdown in Germany, I decided for the last time this year to go to Frankfurt Douglas, smell some perfumes for you. And what's happening to me is crazy. All these stories are coming up, but first, this is the busy main shopping street in Frankfurt called Zeil. And I'm on my way to quickly smell perfumes in Douglas and tell you what's good there. So, let's go. Oh, cool. There's a queue and I have no time. Perfect. Right, so I'm on my way home. All the crazy stories are coming up. Also, all cool perfumes I've smelled are coming up. Um, maybe I can tell you about one right now. It's the newest Charlie Mars flanker, Il Tre by Guerlain. It's very pretty, fresh, slightly aldehydic in the opening, vanilla Charlie Mars. Classy yet modern. Love it, want it. Something else that I really want but is nothing new for me is Diptyque's 34 Boulevard. Gosh, it smells like expensive niche boutique. Slightly smoky, a little bit chewy, spicy. I think I will purchase it this month. It's so beautiful. And every time I smell it, and I've been smelling it every time I'm in Douglas, I think it's worth it. So if you're familiar with it, let me know how you feel. But I think it's one of the most amazing, abstract, niche, expensive smelling fragrances out there. My love. And I am home, guys. But I absolutely don't have time to film this video 500 times because it's already really late and it's not my first take. So let's get started with some cool new fragrances I've smelled in Douglas today. And basically the story is that I really wanted to go to Frankfurt because of their amazing Douglas shop there and smell fragrances for the very last time in 2020 before the second lockdown comes in Germany on Wednesday, which I'm not looking forward to, although it's necessary to do it, I'll be missing going out and smelling fragrances because I have an absolute addiction to perfumes and I'm always looking forward to smell new fragrances. That's why I go to perfume shops on the regular everyday basis and you can expect reviews on newest fragrances on my channel so if you're here for the first time please subscribe and on that note let's get started so I've already shared with you my impressions of newest Shelly Mars flanker filtre I will get back to it in the end of this video but first let me tell you about by Rita's new fragrance called Lil Fleur that attracted me very much particularly because in the opening it smells bubblegummy powdery pink very very lovely it turns sweeter though with time and now in the dry down i smell something very musky and normally i really enjoy musky perfumes but there is some certain type of musk that i can't really tolerate and i noticed it in many narcissus rodriguez fragrances and now I'm worried that it's gonna appear here, but so far it's still a bubblegummy, very, very powdery, but not dusty, pinky, floral perfume. As far as the notes go, I know that there is saffron, cassis, tangerine, damask rose, leather, vanilla, ambery, and woodsy notes, but to me it's a pink bubblegum that smells very, very interesting, you know, and not like the majority of modern fragrances for the ladies, because in my opinion it's rather feminine, and it gives me a massive flashback. So back in the days in the sixth grade I used to wear Armani coat, then in the seventh I wore Armani Mania, and then Romantina by Juliette Hesegan, Lola by Marc Jacobson, and Hypnose by Lancome. So you can tell those are pleasant, mass appealing, yet unique fragrances that are sort of daring, and Little Fleur reminds me of them. So it has um, Jana's name written all over it, and this is something I would definitely love to wear just on the everyday basis. So I'm pretty much impressed by it so far. It's also very long-lasting, at least on the paper. And on that note, let's move on to the new collection 
by Tiziana Terenzi that was launched in summer and I absolutely did not expect to see the entire range in Douglas today but that was the first thing that caught my attention and uh, I gotta be honest with you these bottles look extra. Tiziana Trent's presentation is always on point but something about this collection probably the colors and actual golden sea stars on the bottles oh my god that's just like presentation on another level and fragrances themselves smell real nice too lighter than general fragrances from Tiziana Trenzi, you know, there are many oozy and just really darker kind of fragrances. This collection, I feel, is rather summery, it also looks very summery, and um, the peachy bottles are rather fruity, the turquoise ones breezy, aquatic, fresh, citrusy, and my love at first sniff is the white one, Atlantide. Oh my god, it's so stunning. The only problem I have is that I had absolutely no time because of the major train um, delay, so I needed in five minutes. Um, notice what's new, thanks god it wasn't that hard with Tiziana Trans collection and smell everything, so I'm not sure what fragrances are on the blotters. I know that on one of them is a major powder bomb. It smells so good and uh, once shops are reopened I need to go to Douglas with this blotter which I will save and look for that amazing powdery fragrance. I know that there is one that is very very fruity and juicy. I think it's actually in a turquoise bottle but Terence's signature is definitely in all of these fragrances, so I think this collection is going to be very lovely for the summertime when it's going to be hot and you want something refreshing. But of course, I need more time to experience these perfumes and I sincerely hope that I will get an opportunity to review the entire collection for you guys soon. So if that's something you're interested in, please thumbs up this video. All right, so there are three new launches from Chloe for their sort of exclusive line called Atelier de Fleurs. And the idea behind it, if you don't know guys, is um, to give you know, a chance to create your own customized floral bouquet, if that makes sense. So basically there are many floral fragrances that are really simple. It's like um, a rose perfume, a jasmine perfume, a lavender perfume, a mimosa perfume. They are solid floors and you can wear them on their own or you can mix them, layer them basically. And I mean the collection is very pretty. The scents are very lovely. They are not cheap smelling there is quality in them. They're not super long lasting. These are just lovely, easygoing, effortless floral fragrances. So it's up to you whether you want to spend your money on something you need more of in general, you know, to create more complex bouquets. But once again, I find you can be really creative with these fragrances and I have already created an entire collection overview. So in case you're interested in all fragrances, please check it out. But in 2020, there were three new launches, one of which is Tuberose. And I'm a big fan of Tuberose. I don't know about you, this is a tricky floral note. And I was blown by this fragrance. Honestly, one of the best tuberoses hands down because it smells a little bit vintage, almost aldehydic, but at the same time dazzling floral and fresh. It's spicy and it's, it's a little bit provoking, which I did not expect, so that surprised me in a nice way. Originally it was launched in 1974 under Karl Lagerfeld and now it was relaunched, so it's one of the best from the collection. Another one is Papyrus, which smells cardamomy and woodsy, very lovely, cozy for winter time. And the last is about vanilla, that is so plain and simple that at some point you're like, that's it? It smells so candy-like, so girly. But the simplicity of it makes it kind of cool. I don't know if that even makes sense. But I find to layer with other floral fragrances just to bring in that happy vanillic vibe or with something else you want, you know, to create a vanilla mix. I think it's, it's lovely. It's not necessarily like mind-blowing vanilla. I personally prefer 
Shalimar filtrate that opens with this aldehydic scent that is Shalimar like, but like vanilla is so juicy and fresh there, and it dries down into something really delicious with tonka, with uh, oriental sea of Shalimar, but it's it's more wearable, it's more modern than maybe the original one, so that's definitely something I would love to wear on Christmas, because I still don't know what I'll be wearing, which perfume, so I don't know how to buy it, because there is already so much on my wish list, like that diptyque fragrance I've already told you about, but maybe that will be a nice surprise that I will afford shortly before Christmas and will wear it on Christmas, because I really want to wear it on Christmas. And on that note, guys, that completed this video of my impressions on new releases that I could smell in Douglas for the very last time in 2020, that's kind of sad, but I hope you found it helpful, particularly if you were interested in some of these fragrances. Please let me know your feedback, because you know I love to chat with you guys. And please check out the description box for more helpful information and also for some coupon codes with which you can save money while shopping niche fragrances. Don't forget to follow me on my social media, such as Instagram and Facebook, we can be connected there, you can join my live unboxing sessions with perfumers and ask them questions, and of course, please stay tuned, and in order to be notified about my upcoming content, please ring that bell, and of course, subscribe if you're here for the first time, that would mean so, so much to me, guys, and this week you can expect a lot of fun videos coming up, so please stay tuned, smell good, and we'll see each other really soon. Bye, guys! By the way, guys, please let me know how it is with lockdown where you live. I'm really curious how is the situation around the world at this busy Christmas time. Oh, and also, I'm wondering which fragrances would you love to smell if you could go to the store? Maybe I should ask you that before I go to the store. Let's do that. Comment below and maybe I can smell some tomorrow because that's the last day when the shops are gonna be open and I still need to do more Christmas shopping. I've just realized that I haven't even told you the story yet, so you probably don't understand why it was so crazy for me. So uh, listen to this. Uh, the plan was for me to drive to the town where Benny works, leave my car at the railway station, go to Frankfurt by train, smell fragrances, do some Christmas shopping in an hour and um, get back, pick up Benny and drive home. What happened? Of course, my train needed to have a delay, we got stuck in a tunnel, I started to freak out, and with 30 minutes delay, I only had 10 minutes to go to Douglas, smell all these fragrances that I wanted to review for you guys, and uh, I was running to the station back, and I thought I was late, but thanks God I wasn't, because of course my train had a delay, so yeah. I was super, super stressed out, but I hope it was worth it in the end. What do you think?